Hey, what's going on guys? This is your boy C. Will back to you with another video. Man, I'm super excited today because we are going to be installing the Corsair H60 inside the Alienware War R7 today. And if you don't know, this has been a popular topic. People have been asking me, say, hey, I want to, you know, install the actual liquid cooler. I'm not for sure exactly how to do it. Uh, can I use your video? When are you going to do it? Uh, so those of you that have the Alienware War R7 and you don't have a liquid cooler, uh, I will be helping you out today on how to be able to install that. You know, before we get into the video, if this is your first time here, welcome. Here we do everything tech, all things tech, whatever it is, we like to do it. And if you're a returning viewer, I appreciate you the most because you keep things going. So pretty much today, all you're going to need is just a screwdriver and we got the actual cooler here and let's get into the video. All right, guys. So uh, we got the Alienware War R7 here. We got the Corsair H60 here, 120 uh, millimeter radiator. And uh, man, this has been something I read on the forums and all that good stuff that was definitely compatible uh, with the Alienware War R7. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get this installed into this today. Uh, but we gotta do some preliminaries. Uh, so uh, there is a screw right here on the back uh, that actually controls the actual latch here. So let's go ahead and remove this screw. All right, so when you pop this open, that actually allows this side panel to come off. You can actually touch on the inside of the case uh, to go ahead and uh, take that uh, electric static off uh, from your body. Uh, so that should be sufficient and good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and sit this to the side. Now, if you haven't seen some of my recent videos um i've talked a lot about what i am currently doing with the alienware war r7 uh, so just to recap um i've done all type of upgrades to this machine um but actually right now i actually reverted everything back to its stock format um and the reason why i did that is because i built another machine that's in the back here um you know so if you Watching in my videos, you take a look at my how to build a uh, PC, a gaming PC playlist, and you can see I built my own gaming machine um, a couple of months ago. I got the Alienware War R7 uh, last September. Um, so I put the original power supply back in, the 460 watt power supply. Um, the only other thing that's different um, is I still got the one terabyte hard drive, um, and I have the Samsung 860 Evo that I'm using as my main boot drive right now. So I'm using the SSD, 2.5 inch SSD drive is my main hard drive right now. And then I have the one terabyte uh, 7200 RPM hard drive. It's just uh, for backup storage. Uh, the NVMe slot is empty right now. Um, I pretty much, the original uh, 970 EVO that I put in here, um, I actually put that in my gaming PC. Um, and I'm using um, the Alienware War R7 as a streaming PC. Uh, so I definitely be doing a separate video on what that looks like. I got a whole setup, I bought a new desk, uh, got some more monitors, stuff like that. So I'm actually using the War R7 for, for streaming uh, because as you can see, and I am actually going to hit the latches here at the bottom and right here and I'm swing this power supply cage open and as you can see I no longer have a graphics card in here and for a streaming computer you don't need a graphics card the Intel 7th generation uh, Core i7 8700 which is the CPU that I have in here has an internal uh, iGPU um, and so I use that as the actual graphics because I'm not doing anything with the system except for encoding video and stuff like that for streaming um, the original graphics card I had in here was a GTX 1070 that came with the system. I sold it and bought the RTX 2080 that I currently have in my gaming machine. Um, so I was using the 2080 in here, took it out of here, put that in. I may put another graphics card in here a little bit later on down the line, but it's not a priority right now. Uh, so if you see something missing, you see a gap, that's what was there. Just for the fans, for the people, um, I asked exactly what did you want uh, to see me do to the Alienware War R7, and a lot of people told me uh, that they, you know, they have actual air cooler on their CPU, and they would definitely like to upgrade to a liquid cooler. And how can they get that done? That's what we got the H60 here today for. And so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and show you now on the forums. Um, you know, depending on the actual, you know, I've seen other people replace. 
uh, their air cooler with different types of liquid coolers. I know the H60, I think it's the easiest one. And the reason being is because I believe the back plate that's already included, and this is just on the Intel variant. I'm not for sure about AMD um, Aurora's. I do know what well, as I've read, and we're gonna find out that the back plate that's currently on here right now is compatible with the H60. Um, if we find out for any particular reason that uh, the H60 doesn't fit the back plate that's currently on here, then we're gonna have to disconnect everything, take the motherboard out, and put on a back plate that comes with the 860 so i don't want to do that <laughs> and hopefully you shouldn't have to do that either either um so but we're going to find out but a couple of things we need to do first so what we're going to do is we actually need to take out the power supply um, because this is really going to be in the way so we're going to take the screws out the power supply it's four screws this on the back and uh rule of thumb i pretty much know where all the cables go but if, if this is your first time going inside your system, uh, it is customary to definitely just take a picture. Um, if you take a picture, or uh, take a couple of pictures so you know exactly where all the screws go, cables go, and stuff like that, that'll help you out. Um, I will also make another disclaimer. Uh, if you mess up anything on your computer, I am not responsible. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not taking responsibility of that. So uh, take the heat of caution. Um, you know, they always say, well, what could go wrong? Well, there's a lot of things that could possibly go wrong um, if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, this should be pretty simple. And I'm gonna pretty much um, take you step by step in doing it. But also there is a risk, you know, that you could mess up something if you don't do it the right way. And so I am just taking off, uh, this is a plate that actually covers up the actual power supply cables right here. So I'm gonna set that over to the side. And the screws to the side there and here is the power supply so everything is connected to the power supply so what I want to do I actually want to disconnect the power from the hard drive if you had your graphics card connected of course we would disconnect that I am also going to 24 pin cable I'm going to disconnect this from the motherboard should be a clip in the back there we go this right here is the GPU power cable so I'm going to disconnect this as well because it's connected to uh, the power supply. I am also going to disconnect the SATA power connector. There's the ATA CPU power cable that's connected right here. So we're going to disconnect that. So I disconnected the GPU power cable, the SATA cable that was going to the actual hard drive. I'm going to disconnect the other one. This cable right here, um, it's the SATA cable. It's going to the actual DVD drive. So I'm going to disconnect it. There's also a six pin connector I'm gonna disconnect that and uh, we should be able to take the cables out took all the power cables loose and I definitely show you how to plug these back up uh, so you have four screws right here but before we do this we actually need to remove the other side of the case and then we also need to remove the actual top uh, part of the case as well so we can take the screws off of the top of the radiator okay so if we take a look here, we should be able to pry the side of the cape, uh, the case off. And it's going to take a little bit of pressure, but it should pop off. Now be very careful as you pop this off. And the reason being is because there are cables that's on the side of the case of the Alienware War R7. So there's cables, so be careful when you pry this off. Don't take it off completely. And as you can see here, if I pull this off to the side, there are cables connected here. And uh, so what we need to do is we actually need to unhook these. This actually controls the lighting on the side of the case, so on the side of, on both sides of the Alienware. Um, it has uh, lights, uh, which you can actually change the colors and the lights and stuff like that. So now, the side of the casing comes off. You got your wires just right here. On the side here, there are more cables. And actually, what we need to do is un go ahead and unhook this cable. Just so when we get ready to take the top part off, this doesn't rip out. And there are two screws that we need to take out. One screw is here. And then once we flip this over on the other side, there's another screw on the other side that we need to take off. 
doing this is it's going to allow us to be able to take the top part of the case off. And the actual other screw is here. Now, once we have that taken care of, so we're going to push the actual CD run drive and we're going to slide that out. That's if you have one. Went ahead and took out the hard drive and some of the other set of cables just to get some stuff out the way. Um, and actually while I'm thinking about it, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the RAM sticks. Right now I only have two in here. They are the HyperX Fury uh, Kingston memory. Uh, so that's currently what I have in here right now. Uh, two 16 gigabyte sticks total of 32 gigabytes at 2666 megahertz now here is the tricky part in order to get this top panel off uh, we've already removed the optical drive to get this top panel off uh, it, you're supposed to be able to lift up there's two holes that's on the side right here um, there's one that's right here and there's one that's on the other side and if you try to lift up it doesn't come out what you have to do this is like one whole top piece the easiest way to do this is to uh, kind of position your fingers here, put your thumb here, and gently, with a good amount of pressure, lift up here with these fingers. Put your thumb here to get you some leverage, and you're gonna lift up until you kind of hear that pop. And you're gonna do it just a little bit more. Now, that was a little rough, but once you do that, should be able to lift this up and hopefully we did not break anything all right so voila we was able to get the top panel off without breaking anything <laughs> Whew. i was definitely worried about that now here uh this is the radiator four screws that's right here what we want to do is we actually want to take these four screws out Okay, so now that we have the power supply uh, cage open, what we're gonna do now, there are four screws to the actual liquid cooler that we're gonna go ahead and unscrew these. So now when you lift this up, oh, and on here, this uh, actually has two fans. One is coming from the actual cooler, this is the pump. Then there's another cord that's uh, coming from the actual uh, from the fan so it says top fan on the motherboard and one says the actual uh, pump fan and the CPU fan is left blank so if we unhook these two and very carefully there we go so we're gonna go ahead and actually sit this off to the side as you can see the thermal paste here uh, and there is the thermal paste on the actual CPU itself um, and so what we are going to do is actually clean that off. So to clean this off, um, we got a couple of things here. We have some Q-tips, some paper towels, and isopropyl alcohol. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and wipe off as much as we can. Uh, let's see if this is actually still, yeah. So we could use the Q-tip to get some of the top gunk off thermal paste. And it's pretty much try to wipe off as much as you can. And you can take your time and it wipes off pretty easily. And what you can do is you can take a paper towel, wipe it some more. Once you got it clean off, what we can do is we can actually take another paper towel, dab it with some alcohol. Kind of just wipe that off. You have a clean CPU. Boom. Now, once you got it here, it's clean. Now you don't want to touch this with your bare hands. What we are going to do now is actually go ahead and unbox this actual CPU cooler. And then we'll be able to tell whether or not the back plate that's currently on there, if we'll be able to use it or not. And let's go ahead and unbox this baby. So H60 120 millimeter liquid cooler, high performance. Corsair always makes good products. So that's aside. Style phone here. So we're gonna sit that here. All right, so we got the fan that actually goes, we got to screw that onto the radiator. 
we have some brackets here and actually uh, this is the bracket uh, for Intel um, so if the bracket that's already on the motherboard uh, if it doesn't fit this what we will have to do is actually go ahead and uh, take the motherboard completely out attach this to the back take the other one off attach this to the back and then you know keep going but i didn't want to have to do all that so hopefully we don't have to do that uh, but so we're just going to sit this to the side just in case here goes the screws this um automatically comes with thermal paste already on here uh, so we don't have to add any i do have some just in case um, but um, this is pretty much plug and play uh, so all we have to do is just uh, screw these in and um, we shouldn't have any other problems and this is the SATA for the power SATA power I'm sorry this is the cable to power the pump and then the fan has its own actual power cable that will connect as well so the first thing that we need to do is actually connect the fan that we have here so always take a look at your directions <laughs> just to see what we need the intel standoffs um we're actually looking for the 11 the 115x so we need four of these um and this is what we're going to use to actually screw um into the back plate that's already on the motherboard as the even screws on both sides so that's what we're going to be using yep the actual minor screw so we're actually going to use these to screw down the standoffs so four of those and then the long screws that we have here we actually are going to use these to screw the fan in to the radiator so the top of the fan here the part that shows the corset symbol this is going to be facing back into the case this part right here is actually going to go on the inside of the actual radiator so make sure that your cable is pointed down here and so when we do this it's going to look like that so it's going to suck in the air, it's going to suck in the hot air, blow it out the top of the radiator. Alright, so first things first, let's go ahead and get the extra radiator put in. Okay, so, it's a little tight. Um, it's a real tight <laughs> fit, uh, but once it's in, this is what it's supposed to look like. I am going to use these screws from the top of the radiator from the original. So I'm gonna use these, I'm gonna screw in the top, and then we'll put the actual cooler on. So now what we wanna do is we actually wanna put our standoffs in. Standoffs, we wanna screw these in. So these standoffs here, they actually screw into the back plate. That's what we're doing. And so the fact that these screw in, we're good to go. We do not have to take the motherboard out. This cable right here, it, it actually goes to the top fan right here on the motherboard. You can't see it, but you'll see the label. Um, I pointed out earlier, this actually goes to the top fan because this is coming from the radiator, the fan from the radiator. So let's go ahead and connect that. And this is a four pin connector. So we got that straight. This is our SATA power connector. And then this right here is actually going to go to the pump fan. And uh, this is a three pin and you can leave the fourth pin out. So let's go ahead and just connect this. And so we're connected this to the three pins that's on the left. And, um, and it has actually a little slide thing for it. Uh, so that's that. Now we're gonna take the plastic bottom off and uh, again we don't want to touch this uh, but as you can see um, it already has thermal place already applied so what we're going to do and uh, let's see the best way to do this probably going to be the best way to do it so let's go ahead and sit this down and so now this is sitting on top of the CPU. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and screw these on by hand first and do it in a crisscross fashion. So this is screwing it into the actual standoffs. So when this closes down, actually will. So before we screw everything in, let me make sure that this is how I want to do it. So what we may do is we actually may turn this 
we may turn it matter of fact and actually what i am going to do is i'm going to go ahead and install the memory back in we are going to turn this and i want to go ahead and have my memory in now normally when you put this down and lift it back up i probably need it to put some more pace i recommend that you learn from my mistake i don't think i want to i think i'm going to have it like this i'm gonna go ahead and sit this back down normally i will put paste back on and I think I could do it this way all right I think this is going to be the way to do it so it looks like this is going to be the best way to do it what I am going to do is actually monitor my temperatures because uh, really if you make mistakes um, with uh, reseeding lifting back up and reseeding you're really supposed to put more paste back on just a disclaimer um, so if you have to reseat this, but hopefully again, you learn <laughs> for what I'm doing here. Um, I actually needed to turn it because see when we pull the, uh, pull this down, the cores are going to sit up against the power supply cage. It's fine, but I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to cause any issues. And for any reason, if my temperature starts to get a little wacky, uh, then I'll take this back apart and I'll put some more thermal paste back on it but that's just the FYI so if you have to reseat it you need to wipe out the thermal paste and put some more back on so if you're doing this make sure that you have some thermal paste readily available and let's just kind of test this out and we're going to see how much pressure hmm okay guys so a couple of things uh I had to do some tinkering around. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I figured out which way I'm going to orientate uh, the liquid cooler. I'm actually going to do it this way. Um, I found out by closing down the actual power spot swing, I can actually have the cores hanging over the memory. And it's actually going to go like this. And then it's not going to put too much pressure on the cables. Uh, so I, put, I went ahead and put my RAM back in. Um, and actually, um, what I am going to do, because I reseated this so many times, um, I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to take off the, I'm going to take off the actual thermal paste uh, that came on here uh, because I want to make sure that this gets evenly distributed and don't have any overheating issues. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm going to put on um, some thermal paste I already have. This is IC Diamond. I got this from Micro Center um, a while back when I was building my computer. Um, and we're actually going to apply this, um, but I am going to make my life easier. I'm actually going to reinstall the power supply and uh, plug back in the actual, um, plug back in the 24 pin connector, just so when I get ready to close this down, I don't have to worry about trying to access this type of stuff. And uh, these are, you know, movable, so you can move these around, but I am going to go ahead and um, reinstall just the power supply real quick. This is going to help a brother out. So the only cable that I am interested in reconnecting right now is the 24 pin connector. And the tubes on this liquid cooler are a lot longer than the actual tubes that comes on the Alienware cooler. But hey, this is what happens when you're dealing with aftermarket parts. So I'm going to clean off the cooler. And uh, what we end up doing, again, this is paper towels. Some people use coffee filters. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to clean this off real good. And then I am going to apply um, some more thermal paste. Going to take some alcohol and finish cleaning this off. Okay, so once we got this cleaned off, looking good. Let's go ahead and get the CPU cleaned back off. All right, now we got that cleaned off. We could use a little alcohol. We have a pretty good clean CPU and cooler. So now we got those wiped off. What we're going to do now is go ahead. Now, everybody that does this different. Pretty much don't want to apply too much thermal paste. You just need a pea size and down in the middle. I um, mean, but you don't want to apply too much. <laughs> So, and so all we want to do is actually in the middle, apply a pea-sized amount, and then what we'll do, we'll go ahead, 
sit this back down on here and that will spread go ahead and hand screw this down and then again we're going to do this in crisscross fashion this is why i want to make sure i put this back in here and let's go ahead and put all the parts back in so i already have the actual radiator fan here connected um, i'm going to go ahead and reconnect the actual pump fan and again this is a three pin connector here um it, it's a four pin on the board but the three pin is fine and again you're going to do the actual pins that's all the way if you're looking at it in this direction it's over to the right uh this right here is the uh gpu power uh, so once we put a graphics card back in there um uh, that plugs there this black cord is actually going to connect back to the uh the optical drive which i have here so this is actually going to slide back in got that that's going to connect back here So this cable right here is actually for your uh, for your GPU, which we don't have a discrete graphics card in here right now. Here's the six pin connector. So if you do have an optical drive, the six pin connector actually connects back to the optical drive. We will take the actual SATA power cable and we're going to connect it to one of the actual SATA connectors here. So that is for the pump. So what you need to do is just make sure that you adjust the cables. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I kind of routed this one up under here. Make sure that they are laying down like that. So when we close the cage down, this will sit on this will sit on top of here, uh, but it should be fine. Huh. And don't forget <laughs> your actual CPU uh, power cable. I was wondering why it was all right. So that plugs in in the actual CPU. That plugs in the CPU power connector here. We're gonna put our one terabyte hard drive back in. That slides back in here. And here, we just need to use one of the actual uh, SATA connectors for power. Um, but we have everything connected. Uh, we need to put the actual plate back on here. All right, so the only thing that we need to do is actually put the top back on. So this cable here actually needs to go back in here. And then we're gonna reconnect that. Just like that. Doozy. All right, so we'll go ahead and connect this cable back here. All right, so we got that reconnected. This is the actual panel. So we're gonna reconnect the cables here. So I got one connected and then I'm putting the other one back in. All right, and this is for the actual LED lights. All right, guys, I forgot one thing back in on the side and on the other side but i think i just lost one of my screws <laughs> but don't forget to put the actual because this whole piece comes up this is the top piece it was a screw on both sides don't forget to put that back in we are good to go we have successfully changed the actual cooler so now i am going to hook this back up um, and then we are going to make sure that it is running correctly, that the pump it and you know, the fan speed, um, temperatures and all that good stuff. We are going to check on all this stuff. So stay tuned. Okay. So what we got here, we finally got the system, um, 
back hooked up it's uh plugged up and running this right here is the actual alienware command center um, here you could change the actual effects um, you could change uh, all type of stuff you could look at the thermal controls um, you can actually go in here and as you can see the temperature on the cpu and i'll zoom in here just a little bit temperature on the cpu is 31 degrees so the liquid cooler is working just fine um, the you got the hard drive sensor pci sensor um, here you can actually change this to manual controls um, so you could go here and you could i could change the front fan um, RPM is working at 20% right now. I could put a fan curve and stuff on it. I'll probably do a separate video about fan curves. The top fan um, is the actual fan that's attached to the radiator of the liquid cooler. Um, and this running at idle. And then the CPU fan, it says 20%, but that's actually 100% RPM. Uh, that that's running that right there um, and because it's liquid cool it's gonna always be around a, a little bit over the 4,000 rpm mark because um, even if you change this like if I change this right now to a hundred percent I mean it's already is there is right there it says if you found hundred percent it's always gonna stay like that um, but I could change the top fan to a hundred percent like if I click on use curve or I could say fix and it's that and if i hit apply and then the actual speed will start to go up so if you ever need to go in here you need to make some changes you could do that um, but i definitely just wanted to show you that um, everything is up and running so let me know down in the comments if you have any questions um, any concerns um, but we should be good to go all right guys thanks for watching the video all the way through uh, man, that was super exciting. Um, of course, you know, it was almost kind of like building the computer all again, taking everything out and doing all the good stuff, but we got it done. Uh, so the next step now is for you is, hey, whatever you need to do as far as fan curves and stuff like that within your system, uh, definitely make sure that you set that type of stuff up. I may do a separate video on that, um, but it may not make total sense because as you know, as you see through the video, I don't have a graphics card inside the Alienware War R7 because I use it for streaming now. Uh, so as a streaming PC, I don't need an extra video card. So I may put one in there later and then I'll probably do the fan curves and all that stuff um, and do another video about that. Uh, but that'll be at a later date. Now, I know you see something different in the video. And yes, these particular items here, um, if you follow me on social media, so make sure that you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, um, and Twitter. Uh, you can kind of keep up with, uh, I announced I was going to be doing a giveaway soon. So here are the details on that. So the next step is definitely to reach 2,000 subscribers. Um, so right now we're a little bit over 1,300 uh, subscribers, but we definitely need to get to 2,000 subscribers. Uh, so once we hit the 2,000 subscriber mark, I will be doing a triple giveaway. So um, I am not <laughs> sponsored. This video is not sponsored and I am not sponsored yet by Amazon. Um, but um, I do have Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. So if you any of my tech stuff, you could be able to purchase it with no extra cost. Um, but I do get a small kickback uh, from it. It helps out the channel, helps me buy more tech gifts. But these right here are for you all. So you got two Amazon Fire Sticks and an Amazon Echo Smart Speaker. Um, and these are just some great gifts that I'm going to be giving away. Brand new in the box. Um, and I'm excited. This is so we have three different winners. Um, this will be a US only giveaway. Uh, so again, uh, don't forget to follow me on all social media. We're definitely going to be giving back to the fans, uh, subscribers, stuff like that. Just something to say, hey, thank you. So once we hit the 2000 subscriber mark, um, I'll be getting in contact with you uh, on some sort of type of form of social media. So that means that you have to be either follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, or follow me on Facebook. It's at Will Creatives. Um, on all three of those uh, so you have to be following me on one of those in order and also be a subscriber to the YouTube channel and I randomly choose this um, I'm not going to be using Gleam or anything like that uh, but I will be randomly choosing just based off of me interacting with you all so building up the community we got some great stuff coming uh, future videos that's going to be coming uh, so I definitely look forward to interacting with you all so many people follow me and they hit me up ask me questions i have no problems with that um that's what i'm here for and man i appreciate you love you all and i'll see you in the next video